the reaction to the video that I posted on uh, upgrading the uh, the Land Cruiser's engine has been unprecedented. Lots and lots of questions and lots and lots of well concerns if you like about reliability and so I thought I'd, I'd try and answer them in in a video as opposed to trying to I've, I've answered a lot of them with the keyboard now here's the general answer if I now take an engine and I get more horses out of it you're going to need to feed those horses what I'm basically saying is that when an engine becomes more powerful it needs more energy to produce that power however if the power is produced and is more efficient then it needs fewer less food to feed those horses so what I'm saying is that fuel consumption let's start with that will the unit chip improve fuel consumption not necessarily if I drive it using the extra power and I'm always got my foot down and I'm enjoying the extra power all the time no how can it possibly use less fuel than if I had the standard engine and was running it and driving it more gently and using less power to get places it's illogical so am I going to save fuel only if I drive it in a similar fashion as I would have had I not changed and upgraded the engine remember the map that the chip is is changing the vehicle's map now the vehicle already has a map when Toyota produce a map for an engine like this they look at a number of parameters most important thing being emissions they've got to they've got to pass emission regulations okay then economy then performance and then the other things that come with it so now what we're saying is that well it's exactly the same as putting in a new suspension system people will ask me well the, it's a Toyota for heaven's sakes they spend millions of dollars working and getting the vehicle just right true getting it right for whom for the market the people buying the car now if I went and bought a Fortuna or a Kluger and started changing the suspension changing everything like this you might say well what are you using it for you're using it for carrying a family it's designed for carrying a family surely Toyota has done a really good job well yes they're nice with they they already carry their family very well they're safe and they're quiet and ba da 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 and they're as reliable as Toyotas generally are and why would I want to change it there's less incentive isn't there this vehicle is built for non-governmental organizations mining and agriculture I am not a member of an NGO and I do not work on a farm and I do not work on a mine so it's not right for me is it I'm not using it from its for its primary purpose I'm adapting it so the moment you adapt a vehicle for your primary purpose well then changes are acceptable do you not agree I think so uh, nobody makes a vehicle for overlanders it's such a tiny market why would they build a vehicle for overlanders when zero point uh, the tiniest little percentage of people even those that buy these vehicles such a tiny percentage use them for overlanding so I have to upgrade it so I've upgraded the suspension still working on that now it's in the vehicle now but it's not right so I'm not going to show it to you quite yet still got some work to do on it but I'm upgrading it why am I upgrading it I'm not upgrading the GVM I still I'm gonna carry the same amount of weight as I would have had I not upgraded the suspension it's too uncomfortable it's terrible so I'm getting a product that is more comfortable more able to take the long distance with a heavy load in more comfort than the standard one would do could this vehicle do canning stock route in July which I'm doing as is without me making any changes to it whatsoever absolutely no question about it it would probably do it without the slightest problem maybe I'd cook a shock absorber break a bush it's a pretty tough track will I do that with the upgraded suspension probably not why well the suspension is stronger the spring the, the shock absorbers are far more capable 
of taking the kind of punishment that I'm going to put the vehicle through because they're designed for it. They're specifically designed for it. The vehicle's own suspension isn't. I can say exactly the same about the engine. When these vehicles are sold around the world, the map that Toyota puts in them, and this is the same for any vehicle, they put in a vehicle, a map that is suitable for everybody uh, along the parameters that I've already described. Everybody will be happy with this particular thing. And I mentioned in the previous video about the t-shirt. You know, the, if you buy a t-shirt off the internet, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, for me, it's a, a, a large is better than the medium, but a medium will do, but the large is actually a little bit baggy. So what would I prefer? Taylor making the t-shirt. I mentioned that. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm saying I'm going to be driving in a particular way can I not tune it for me, my fuel, my circumstances, and my, because of the five different maps, my driving choice. So let's get past that. That's acceptable, I think, to you. But you're saying is, a lot of you are saying is, what about reliability? Toyota have built in reliability into their vehicles, and that's why they've got the reputation for reliability. I couldn't agree more. I don't... <laughs> Let's put it this way. You cannot say a chip is bad. That's like saying, basing all cars on the, so a larder or a Trabant. That's a car. Let's, a Trabant is terrible, dangerous, underbraked, awful piece of, ter really terrible. Those people that own them are probably very lucky because those people around them don't have anything so they're better than nothing but let's say okay that's a car we'll base all cars oh they're all tinny and break down all the time and and smelly and we know they're not it's exactly the same thing about chips one chip is not the same as another chip the Unichip, and I, I know this might sound right now like I'm doing a big sales pitch for Unichip. I'm not actually doing a sales pitch for Unichip. I'm doing a sales pitch for me. I don't take these things lightly. And I, you know, I've so often, I have been contacted by so many people. Hey, this chip, the power, this chip. Have you heard about this chip, the power? Race something. The, I don't know much about them, individual ones. When you look for a chip, if you're thinking about chip, chip if you go to a chip company and, and, and their boast is, we'll get 4,000 horsepower out of your engine compared to Fred's chip and it'll only get, that'll only give you 2,000, then run. Do not, because that's the wrong, wrong approach to a chip. This engine is very under specced in its natural form. And Toyota do that for the reliability, and they take this very similar motor, and they put two turbochargers on it, and put it in the Land Cruiser 200, and it produces far more power than this one does with the unit chip. So, so what are we doing? If the primary objective of putting in a chip is to get more power, and you are going to drive like that, full power, a lot all of the time then I agree with you it's going to affect vehicle reliability it has to because the engine is working harder but what I've done here is I've improved efficiency the net result is I get more power why because it's more efficient you, you can't get it you can't make it more efficient and not have more power because well, that's what efficiency is. It's power, fuel consumption, throttle response, and all of these different things. So if you have a chip manufacturer boasting about claims of power, then I, as far as I'm concerned, run, because I could double the power out of this thing with a unit chip if it would be easy, more than double, easy. But, and having known, that I, I know the chap from unit chip, I know him personally, and I've known him for a long, long time, and we've had dinner together, and, and, and I've, fa I've been always fascinated by his product, and he's, he's so conservative. He, if, as far as he's concerned, if it's gonna damage the engine, then we failed. That's his attitude. He's not interested in selling chips, he's interested in honing performance. That's his genuine desire. 
Yeah, he's a wealthy man and he's been extremely successful. You know something? You get extremely successful with a product that has a, an amazing reputation, like this one does. Not a one-off product that makes your car more powerful. That doesn't make a great product. That's my take on it, Nadav, and, and fitting the unit chip was not done lightly. I mean, yes, I know him and I got it for nothing. That's got nothing to do with it. Would I have fitted, and I've been offered many, and I've said, no, thank you. Why? Because I don't know the product. I don't know the people behind it. I don't know the philosophy behind it. There are many good chips on the market. Unichip is not the only one. Whenever somebody has come to me and said, have you seen this chip? It can do this. 90% of the time, I thought to myself, Unichip could do that two years ago. They are world leaders. But just knowing that there's this philosophy of, if it affects the reliability of the engine, then no. Now, setting one on this thing, goes like a rocket. It's actually silly how fast it is. If I now drive it on setting one all of the time, and logic tells me it's going to have an effect on reliability. So, there, so one needs a little bit of mechanical sympathy. I will not drive it on one all the time because it's not needed. That will increase my fuel consumption because the power setting is the power setting. It's not the efficiency setting. It's more efficient, yes, but it's more powerful. So the primary objective is more power. But there are built-in safeguards. If this thing cannot overfuel, and if you want to damage in a diesel engine, there are two things you do with it. You drive it at too low RPM, too high power settings on too low RPM, destroys the diesel engine, even the non-turbocharged old ones, the old 1HZ Toyota engine. If you want to break that engine, drive it too easily, too softly at too low RPM. Destroys that engine. It likes to be work hard and hot. Rev it. That's what it likes. This much more modern engine, I can rev it and will it last as long as if I drove it sensibly? No. How can it? Logically, it won't. So, <laughs> so to say that the reliability has been compromised the answer is, if I drove it in its standard form without doing any improvements on the, uh, the efficiency and drove it like a hooligan, no difference. Now I don't need to drive it like a hooligan to get the same amount of power as I would have got from the standard unchanged engine. That's the way I see it. So it's up to me if it affects the reliability. Will it affect the inherent reliability of the engine? No. When I need to get up that long sand dune and uh, I need a bit of power, then the power is there. And the vehicle, the vehicle, the unit chip is designed, if, if it gets to the point where it's overstressing the engine, it just cuts back fuel. It's, it's got a safeguard built in. So that's why I fitted it. And that's why I'm completely confident in the fact that it's not going to affect reliability. Now, I made a few notes here on other things that, that um, people have mentioned. Um, emissions. Uh, am I going to change the exhaust pipe on the car? No. Why? Well, the the uh, the, system, the new systems in this in this vehicle are a little bit more complicated than the previous uh, models because of stricter emissions controls. And this is very good on CO2s. So I'm going to leave it like that. I don't see any reason I could change the exhaust pipe and get it to sound a little better and get a little, few more horsepower. Hey, it's got enough horsepower. And I need more horsepower. If I could get a bit of more fuel consumption, might think about it. But at the expense of emissions, nah, don't think so. Right now, I have no intention of changing the exhaust pipe at all. I just don't see a point. Will it affect the warranty? I can at any time just set it on the ordinary factory setting so I can make a direct comparison performance. And if I take it in for a service, I might just unclip the unit chips and you, they, they supply a little blank and you can just blank them out as if the thing isn't there. So my answer to that is it might. Not 100% sure on that, so don't, don't quote me. Um, that's about it. Oh, the last thing is somebody said running it in. What about being careful with the engine in the first thousand kilometers? Here's my take on running it in. When they say be careful in the first thousand kilometers, they do not, they do not underline big capital letters, do not mean 
drive the engine gently. If you want to ruin an engine, drive it gently when it's new. Here's the key. Warm it up quickly, which means drive it normally until it's at, 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 it is at operating temperature. Do not race it until it's at operating temperature. And whatever you do, no, even new, old, doesn't matter, never warm an engine up by idling it. It fills the whole thing up with coke. It is the worst thing you can do for an engine, new or old, is to warm it up by idling. You want the engine to get to maximum, uh, optimum operating temperature as quickly as you can. And you do that by driving it normally. And then, with a new engine, give it revs. I'm not saying tow a boat up a 20 kilometer, you know, one in eight climb. No, and full throttle, I'm not saying that. I'm saying when the engine is new, brand new, rev it. Take it to 3000 RPM, change gear. Take it to 4000 RPM, change gear. Take it to two, run it at, t uh, at 100 k's now, 110 k's now, 80 k's now, change down. Get the revs revving up. Go right up to the red line, it's absolutely fine. In fact, it's a good thing when the engine is new. It's a very bad idea to be too gentle because the pistons never seat properly if you do that. I'm not saying hammer the engine, I'm saying rev it freely. Let the engine work, let the engine get hot. I'm not talking about super hard work, I'm talking about revs. And I know this for a fact. And I base it on aircraft engines, aircraft piston engines. You know, it's got a big sign saying, do not run this engine in. Full power or idle for the first 25 hours. Never take an, a new aircraft engine and go on a long run. It will never seat, pro, pro, it will burn oil its entire life and never produce proper RPM. Why? Because the, you need the engine, you need it to get hot, you need it to work for it to bed in because it's going to spend its life at operating temperature and working hard. Well, seat it for working hard early on. That's my take on, on uh, running in the engine. So in terms of fitting the unit chip and affecting its running in, makes no difference. Why should it make a difference? It makes no difference at all. As long as, as long as you run it to operating temperature before you get the engine to work hard and you get it to operating temperature by a normal drive and never under rev the engine. And I think that is about it. I think I've covered anything. Um, what are the risks of putting in a unit chip? That's up to you. The risks of putting in a chip, that's up to you. Buy rubbish, don't do any research, buy cheap off the shelf, you could, I reckon you could damage your engine. I think there's a very good chance. Buy a good quality, well-researched, well-respected product. I do not believe there's any risk at all in your engine. And all you'll get in is a, a, a better performance car, more fun to drive, just a better all-round experience. There you go, my 20 cents worth. Let me now tell you what I've been doing with the vehicle and what you can look forward to in the next few weeks. I have been doing some sound insulation and I've uh, just about finished that project and I'll explain all that later. I've got this little doodah here, which is uh, a little thing. Isn't that cool? I'll explain that later. I spent some time at my local ARB dealership, as if you couldn't tell and uh, I'll be bringing you that soon as well. We had a great couple of days. Uh, the suspension is in, although it's not right. Uh, we're still working on that. Um, got to do a few alterations this week, so that's not quite right. A few tweaks. I've got some very nice products to show you. Uh, I've got a air system and uh, cool stuff, to say the least. Oh, and I've been working on the interior. Here's a very, very short preview of the interior. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, I'll tell you more about that later. A few of the things that I still want to do though before canning stock. Uh, 
The camper, that whole roof is coming off and the Hercules, the Alucab Hercules camper, which is the one that I designed, well, I designed it with Alucab in 2011-12, uh, that, the new version, is going on top of this vehicle and that's happening in about five weeks, six weeks time. Uh, a bit more than that, yeah, whatever. Uh, after I get back from the United States. That's a complete transformation. And we have designed, and I've been working with the guys at Alucab and designing an interior based on my old design, but better, much better. And I've got some products that are absolutely amazing that I found that I'm fitting to the vehicle. It's gonna be stunning. So there's gonna be a little bit of a break. I'm gonna bring you videos next two or two, three weeks. Then I'm in America. Then there'll be a bit of a break and then there's going to be some cool stuff from America. And the next video you'll see on my YouTube channel will be an explanation of what we're doing in America, which includes live videos from the USA. More of that on the next video.